Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be my answer to question number seven by Robert Z uh, for his uh, 2023 Vinyl Community Lottery. And question number seven is kind of a like simple right to the point question, but definitely kind of a deep one to think about. Uh, what What do you plan to do with your collection if you die? You know, if, if you're not around to actually sell it yourself before you fall over, what's going to happen with your collection? And I've definitely given some thought to it. And let me kind of explain how I organize my collection really quick. And that'll make it very easy to understand how I envision ideally what happens to it. Um, first of all, every single piece of my collection is all in Discogs. And I mean, the exact pressing is in Discogs. I also go through and I do a grading in Discogs as well. And I hate the fact that Discogs does the, like when you're selling or buying, like the near mint, then VG plus. And it's like, like for me, that gives VG plus no meaning at all. Because when someone says VG plus, are they talking about something that's one hair away from being VG, which I don't want a VG plus like that? Or are you talking about VG plus where it's one hair away from being near mint, which is a whole different ball game. So just the fact that Discogs doesn't put in an excellent or you know other stuff in between but again whole whole different whole different uh, conversation and video uh, but you know you, you can make your own you know rankings and folders and everything in discog so i i have you know sealed which is the only thing that can be mint in my opinion uh near mint excellent you know vg plus blah 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 so I, I put a lot of different categories or a few different categories in between near mint and vg plus which is again mainly to be specific vg plus plus excellent minus excellent excellent plus near mint near mint minus near mint like that's, <laughs> so th that that's kind of how i do my grading because those steps are significant to me but anyway so every single one of my albums is the proper pressing in discogs it's all rated vinyl and cover and then any notes I do put in the comments section that I feel significant to that pressing or my copy or whatever else then I take that information off of Discogs and I put it into an Excel spreadsheet all the same stuff year of the album of course title blah 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 uh, condition of cover condition of, of vinyl um, the pressing that it is and then what I estimate to be the actual value of my album because of course on Discogs you're getting medium high blah 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 um, but in my Excel spreadsheet, I can actually put this is my current estimated value of this record. And I basically price it the exact same way I would if I'm pricing something at the shop to put out for sale to our customers. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to be very, I'm not trying to be, I'm, well, I guess I am, but I'm trying to be very, very accurate to the exact current value of that album, what it's actually selling for and what people are putting it out to sell for. So that's what I have in my Excel spreadsheet, right? And I'm doing that. I've done that for every single record that I have. I'm in the process of doing that for my CDs as well, putting in all the exact pressings. Uh, I'm about maybe a tenth of the way through my CD collection, and I'm probably about about the same, maybe about a tenth of the way through my cassettes as well. But everything exact pressings and and values. Uh, so I have the Discogs, and then I have Excel spreadsheet. And then on top of that, I'll put these little stickers on the back of each album, which has basic information. It has the, the year the album was released, so 1977. The vinyl here is VG++, so just a hair away from being excellent minus. Uh, the cover is excellent, and this is a 1977 US pressing. And its value around $65 is, is what, what that's worth. So then that's there. So a bit of redundancy, obviously, but at the same time, it's I, I like the organizational piece of it, and that's kind of how I do it. So I have my Discogs, have my Excel spreadsheet, have a little sticker on the back. Now, where that comes into play with what happens with my collection. If something happens to me, my mother inherits my collection, right? She comes in, she knows nothing about vinyl whatsoever, right? Except how to play it. That's, that's about it but she's gonna come into this and has no idea of values and all this type of stuff, complete and total overwhelming. Well, my number one concern with my collection going is that my mom does not get ripped off just because she's not aware of, of what this, you know, 
the values and blah, blah, blah. So that's my number one concern. So right off the bat, even at the very least, someone's not going to come along and offer her $5 for this Ramones album where she can pick it up and just look on the back and say, well, when Brandon priced this, he said it was worth $65. Like, how are you offering me $5 for this? Like, okay, no way. So just having a, a price sticker right there, you know, ensures that she's not going to get ripped off in that regard. Now, granted, we know prices move and they can move pretty fast these days and all of that. So there could be some $10 record I have now that all of a sudden is worth 100 or whatever. But I do make an effort to consistently update my, my collection in that regard. And for the most part, a good vast majority is going to fall somewhere around the value that I have at the time if something happens to me. So, okay. All right. So she's not going to get ripped off there. Um, and I've had this discussion with her and I've talked about it with Billy a couple of times. Um, but I would actually, I really want to kind of get like a formal contract set up with this stuff. That I, Cause I think this would be really cool. My ideal situation is she is going to call Billy, my best friend, the guy whose record shop I work for, the guy who I, who I trust, right? Billy, can you do a consignment sale for me where I would like for you to take Brandon's collection and sell it? And I mean, we haven't, once again, we've just basically talked about it on the surface, but you know, you keep 10, 15% of the proceeds and then give me the other 85, 90% of the proceeds, right? So just by setting up that consignment, you know, there's been a, a few good things that have happened. Like number one, my mom's not going to get ripped off because now she's dealing with someone that I trust that I know won't rip her off and knows what the heck he's doing with this stuff, <laughs> you know, knows very well. So that in and of itself is a huge positive, just making that connection. So she's going to have Billy come in and do a consignment, right? So now all she has to do is open the door, let Billy come in here and scoop up everything, box it all up, right? I mean, CD box sets, CDs, uh, LP box sets, the whole nine. Just box it all up, take it to the shop. Now, the, and again, another positive thing that I would feel from this, you know, if I'm kind of you know, looking down from the heavens, hopefully <laughs> looking down from the heavens and seeing this process take place is like, man, now I'm feeling really, really good that I just put that inventory in Billy's shop, right? Because I feel like I have some nice pieces in my collection that would make some awesome freaking videos of look what we're auctioning off this Monday night. Look what we're putting out on the floor this Saturday drop and like all of that. Like, yes, it would make me feel very good to think all of this would be coming in and building up drops for Riverbend Records. That would be awesome, right? So that's the other positive there. Now, on top of that, you know, now that this stuff is in the hands of someone who knows how to sell, I feel like with what I've done, it keeps it very, very simple for Billy to do this and help my mother out in this regard because every record has already been ultrasonically cleaned. Every record is already in a rice paper sleeve. Every record has already been priced the exact same way I would price it if I was working at the shop. And every single record has been graded exactly the way I would have graded it if I was doing stuff for the shop. So it's like, Billy's not starting from scratch with having to look stuff up on Discogs. Which pressing is this? Let's clean it. Now it's clean. Let's grade it. Let's go buy the rice paper sleeves to put it in. Let's buy the outer sleeves. Let you know. He's not having to deal with all of that. He's like, I can literally pull stuff out of the box and just decide, put it on the shelf. You know, so that's going to make it a heck of a lot easier for him to have to go through that process, right? So. Again, another piece that kind of makes me feel like it's like someone handing him a collection to sell that all he has to do is literally put it on the shelf and sell it. You don't have to go through all of that work, right? Um, and then, like I said, he's keeping 10, 15% of each piece that he sells and gives my mother 85, 90% of, of the rest. Um, so that's definitely a positive. And I even extend that maybe a little bit further because the other thing that it makes me think about is the fact that, um, you know, Billy, one of the cool things that he does in his shop, because obviously he was a collector long before he, he opened up a record store. And I think, you know, Dylan over at Noble Records is kind of like this too. 
is that when he gets amazing pieces in his in, into the shop, his first reaction isn't to put it on Discogs, sell it for a premium, and get as much money as I can as quick as I can. Like he's Billy's very very adamant about I want my locals, the people that come in that support this shop all the time, walking in the door. I want them to have first dibs and adequate dibs at this amazing stuff that I'm getting in. He's very, very adamant about that. So a lot of the big grails and stuff that we have that we could easily sell online in a heartbeat, they'll sit on the shelf for five months, six months, sometimes a year. Okay, nobody here locally has decided they wanted to get it, even though they've been eyeing it for months and months and months. Now I'll put it on Discogs and sell it, right? So that's the other piece that I think would make me really happy seeing this process take place is now what I know is all the boys from the shop, like all the regulars that come in that we hang out with and talk with, you know, Tim, Sean, Brett, like on and on and on. Those will be the guys that will be buying probably quite a few of the, you know, significant or amazing pieces in my collection that they've always wanted. Like, they're going to be snatching all that stuff up. So, yes, I'm going to feel pretty darn good about, I got to enjoy this collection. My mom got it. She got the fair money for it, so she didn't have to deal with it. She had no stress about it, and she got all that money for it. Billy earned, you know, some extra money for not having to purchase inventory or anything. So, he, he got some extra cash flowing into him. He got some good inventory for the shop. You know, some stuff to show, to sell, to highlight on Monday night videos, to highlight on the wow wall. All my buddies that come into the shop, they've taken so many pieces of my collection and now and put it into their collection. And like that's where, you know, those pieces are now gonna go and have homes. That's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like I hope if that happens, I get a chance to watch it from wherever I'm at, because that would make me pretty darn happy and pretty excited. So uh um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of that's kind of how I, I envision it taking place. That's even why I keep a, a little note here. And again, I just, of course, it's all kind of place you can store information and you know, electronic age and blah, blah, blah. But I've just always kept a little note, not even a note, it's a little post stamp over here where I have the, the password to my Discogs sitting right there by my computer. So it's like, if this ever does happen, you know, mom, all you gotta do is just give that password to Billy. Because even if he even if he wants to sell some of the stuff online or, or you know look it up to see if there's a current price change or whatever the case may be, it's already right there. Just go into Brandon's Discogs. You can look up everything just like that. You can just hit sell item and put the price in just like that. It's like you don't have to go through all of the this matrix number and is this the what or is this the one with the it's done. It's graded. It's clean. It's ready to go. Um, I just, I, I, I love the idea about all of that stuff. That all of that would make me very, very happy. So anyway, that's kind of my idea. Um, as always, VC, let me know what you think, and uh, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.